the time has come to say goodbye to this uh, beautiful, awesome Rain Machine HD12 smart sprinkler controller, and uh, I'm going to install the Blue Spray 16 zone Wi Fi sprinkler controller in its place. All right. All right, so I've moved our area over to the left, is where I started, and I found a spot over to the right, and this is where I actually had my old uh, dumb sprinkler controller was right here, so in the past. So since this has more of a vertical spot, I can pop this down and uh, drill the screw in. Okay, my wires are blue, green, yellow, red for the different zones, so let's put them in here and see what happens. Okay, now we have the white wire, which is the common wire, and that is right there, calm. Zones are hooked up. Let's check the instruction manual to see what's next. Wires are connected. Let's plug it in. All right, I can hear it. All right, so the next step is to hold down the reset switch. All right, so I did wait a good probably a minute and uh, the blue spray Wi-Fi did appear on my laptop. So now we're going to connect to it. Okay, so from here, let's jump into settings. I'm going to go to network. I'm going to look for my Wi-Fi network, and Beagle Brigade is my network. All right, put in my key here. All right, we're set up. Okay, now that we've connected to the device and set it up to my Wi-Fi, I'm going to take it out of the, uh, the reset mode or discovery mode, and uh, we'll see if I can connect to it from my laptop now. So after I flip the reset switch back up, that means the blue spray is going to connect to my Wi-Fi that I had set up. And then I had to remember on my laptop to switch back to my home Wi-Fi because I was still trying to connect to the blue spray Wi-Fi. So I did that, and now we're set up into this cool lawn view with uh, a lot nicer house than what I've got, but it's pretty neat. So I'm going to start playing around with this a little bit and uh, see if I can set up a new program. It says no zones found, so I'm Guessing I need to set up some zones somehow. Ah, and look, it looks like I have some zones here. So it looks like I may have figured it out. You're supposed to drag and drop zones like that. So it's kind of weird. You can't really get a feel if you're actually doing it, but you are. Okay, so now I've got my zones. Let's try to drag them around a little bit. So zone four is my backyard. Okay, here we go. Zone four is my backyard flowers. Zone three is my backyard grass. Zone one is my front yard grass. All right, let's drag. Front yard grass, okay, yeah, fight me. Uh, front yard grass and zone two, front yard flowers. Sweet. So yeah, let's test it out. Let's see uh, if zone three will come on if I water now for two minutes. I hear it. And there is zone three fired up. All right, zone three is working. Let's turn off zone three. Can I cancel it? Yep, okay, I just <laughs> clicked it again and said turn off for zero minutes. Okay, all my zones are set up, so that wasn't too bad. Let's go back into settings, let's go into programs, and my general watering is gonna be uh, 25 minutes each zone. So let's make a new schedule. New run. Let's do a start time of 6 a.m. Run the general uh, general watering. We'll use the year-round season. Yep, it's even. We'll do it every... We'll do it odd days. I like odd days. That works for me. Effective starting now. That's fine. So the whole point of this thing is for it to be smart 
So I want to use the conservation settings and uh, the weather settings. So I'm going to register and uh, see what happens here. Fill all this out and I'll come back. Okay, I just went through the registration process. It was really simple and easy. So now I'm going to enable weather settings and see what we can do. Uh, if the chance of rain is at least, let's say, 80%, don't rain. Don't water. If the chance of rain is at least 80%, temperature is less than zero, that doesn't happen. Wind gusts greater than 100, doesn't very happen either. But that's pretty cool. Those are good options to be able to be like, hey, if it's going to be 25 mile an hour winds, uh, my stuff's just going to be blowing everywhere. So just don't even water. Follow water restrictions. That's e interesting. Let's see if they have Solano County. I'm very curious. Cannot find anything that matches. Get my time zone set up. That's under uh, settings, system, time zone. And I'm in the Pacific North American time zone. So that'll kind of sync everything up a little bit better. Once you've completed your registration, head over to bluespray.net and then click on the account button. And you're going to log in with your email and your password that you just set up. And then once you get in, you'll see the blue spray controller that you set up, you'll see your address, and then you'll hit go, and then you connect to your setup. Now, this doesn't seem that crazy, but it is. It's really good because you can, if you're at the office or if you're at someone else's house or if you're on your phone, not connected to Wi-Fi, this is how you connect to your unit from outside of your own network. All right, I'm back from lunch. I took a little break and now I'm gonna to try to install the garage door sensor on the Blue Spray unit and see how that works. I got myself a Honeywell magnetic contact. This is what mounts onto the, the wood above the garage and this is what goes onto the garage door. So I'm gonna to have to find some spots for these. And then when they get pretty close together, it makes a contact and it means the garage door is closed. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is unplug the blue spray unit. And now I'm just going to hook up the switch just to see if it works. Just to see what the blue spray says before I route it all through the garage and up and down and, and all that fun stuff. So let's just see where we're at. So I've got the garage door sensor installed and I want to see if it's actually registering as a garage door sensor. So how would I know if it's open or close or if, or if anything's actually happening? So, hmm. Okay, so I saved it. And now it looks like it is sensing that it's closed over here. So now if I move this away, give it a second. Sweet, it's saying the garage door is open. And it says, hey, after one minute, it's going to close. So this is working very well right now. Software is not too intuitive, but as a tech guy, I kind of just play around with stuff and, and see what happens. So awesome. So the sensor is working. If I put it back together, boom, the garage door's closed. And then I'm sure, yeah, this is sweet. So this is a button just to open and close your garage door on a whim. So this is a huge feature of the Blue Spray, and I'm really excited to play with it for the next couple weeks. All right, so now I'm going to try to wire this thing up for real and see how it feels. So before I go and mount the garage door sensor that will detect if the garage door's open or closed, I'm going to wire up the garage door button that the switch that the blue spray can actually use to open and close the door. Okay, I've got my 50 feet of bell wire here and I put one of the lines into the common and one into the push button and we're gonna put it back to the blue spray and uh, see how it shakes out. All right, I got the temporary wiring in for the garage door switch. I plug the garage door back in and now we're going to see what happens if I try to actually open the garage door. Ho ho! Magic! So I'm jazzed about the garage door sensor thing, but uh, so I refresh the page and nothing shows up. It shows up for a second, then it goes away. 
If I go back to settings, sensors, if I hit unlock that and then hit save, and then refresh, no, okay, I thought the garage door would come up then. So apparently they want you to have some kind of close after or close at or retry going. It's almost like a, a thing they require you to have. Have it set up that you'll close the garage door after five minutes for that to even show up in, in the left side here, which I think that's kind of a bummer to me because I don't really care about the close after uh, settings. Okay, so how about this? If, if my garage door is ever open for more than 90 minutes, close it. That seems like a pretty good uh, place in the middle because five minutes is like, yeah, I just want to have the garage door open. But if your garage door is open for an hour and a half, that seems like a decent spot for me to be like, okay, close it after an hour and a half. So we're looking at the top of the garage door right here, and uh, I think I found the spot where I'm going to mount this part of the sensor, and uh, it's just going to be a lot of trial and error, I think. I'm also doing a little bit of cable management with uh, some of these little hammer-in cable routers, so this uh, wire is out of the way of the door because this is a rolling, moving spot right here, so I'm giving it plenty of clearance, tacking it up, and then I'm going to route it all the way back to the uh, blue spray controller. All right, we're mounted and ready to go. So this is attached to the garage door. This is attached to the house. Uh, it, the sensor is registering as closed right now, so once I test it, it should register as open. All right, I just ran my test on my garage door and everything's working. I'm super pumped about it. The door switch is working, the door sensor is working, and uh, that's fantastic. Overall, I'm very happy with the blue spray device so far. Uh, setup wasn't too bad. The hardware stuff was pretty easy. The garage door sensor stuff all made sense, but it took a little while to get it all set up. But I'm pretty happy with it so far. I'm gonna take a couple weeks to play with it and review it, and uh, I'll have that video and blog post up in about two weeks. All right.